Okay, so um, let's get it started then. Uh, can you all hear me? Please give me a yes if you can hear me and uh, and um, so we can actually start. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for uh, thank you for being here. So good morning, good afternoon, good uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, thanks uh, for taking the time to to join the webinar. Uh, I'm Giuseppe Basile. I'm also known as the Big Stalker, and I will be your host today. I want to thank fxstreet.com and particularly Adinda and Vicky who made this uh, webinar possible and really uh, at FX Street there is uh, great stuff, there are ways there to, uh, to help. Today I'm going to talk about this money management as, and as you know very well, uh, this is a very, very, very important topic uh, and uh, this management can actually make you or break you as a trader. I will also touch on money management, which is slightly different from risk management. And this is the art of managing your position in the market in order to, on one side, minimize risk. So as the same function as risk management. On the other side, you want, of course, to maximize results. And uh, so in this uh, webinar at the end, there will be a combination of both risk and money management. And this is what really allows you to uh, reach your trading objectives. Okay, so uh, as usual, what I do, I, I present all the material and then uh, every now and then I'll stop and ask you for, for, for questions and we will have a, a final uh, Q&A session. So um, uh, let's go then. And uh, I'm going to touch on four um, points here. I will present myself, introduce myself and explain why I'm qualified to talk about money risk management. Um, I will produce and provide you um, risk management basics, and I will I will include the CPF for traders, which is a formula that I learned from Van Tart. It's a very simple formula, but still a lot of people don't use it. I will then dive into advanced risk management and particularly uh, risk management in modern markets. And now you know that uh, modern markets have a dominant participation of algorithmic trading, and that constitutes my um, uh, my edge as well. That's where I get my edge in trading. Um, and finally, I will provide you a number of examples. So, um, you know, a risk a risk disclaimer in a in a presentation where we speak about risk management. It's almost a joke. But it's not a joke. It's very, very important to remember that trading uh, is, a, is a game that you win in defense. And I use, I like to use an acronym, PPC, Protect Precious Capital. So always remember that, uh, and in fact, when the money is gone, the game is over. Uh, of course, trading Forex carries a high level of risk and might not be suitable to for all investors. So um Particularly, it's very important you don't trade if you have to pay your bills with your gains. And uh, unfortunately, every now and then, I meet people who uh, plan to do that, and very more often than not, actually, always they are not successful. So, uh, if you are um, watching the recording of this webinar, stop it now and read uh, the full uh, disclaimer here. So, a little bit about myself, very quickly. Um, I have a computer science, I'm a computer science engineer, uh, um, and I became uh, an engineer in 1999. In 2010, I earned a master's in finance uh, in Ireland, and uh, I became CMT in 2012. The, um, I started trading in 2001, committed to research in 2003, but only understanding 2006 that I need, uh, I need mentoring. Uh, I had some very great mentors, Van Tarp, Pivica Juracic, Dier Barton, David Esley, Jody Navri, only to, to uh, mention a few of them. I have more than 17,000 hours exposure to the markets and over 80,000 in the last three years. In 2012, I started with .com, and I'm also associated with SIAT, the, um, uh, the uh, Italian uh, um, the Italian chapter of the IFTA, the International Federation of Technical Analysts, and I published in the last three years three uh, research papers. I'm going to launch in 2014 FIPSTalkerTrading.com, where I'm going to offer one on one uh, coaching, group coaching, online mentoring, trading signals. If you are interested, give a look at, at that. The website is now still up, 
uh, but you you can you can actually have a, a quick look at that. My trading edge is spotting algos, um, algorithms and program trading and, and their footprints on price. So why I'm qualified to speak about uh, risk management, as I mentioned, I'm aligned to IFTA and I published three articles in the last three, three years. Now, uh, publishing an article, it's quite a rigorous scrutiny uh, process I have, you have to go through, which guarantees quality. And this is executed by members of a scientific committee. Um, there is also another important uh, nice story I have. During my master's uh, thesis proposals, uh, proposal with college uh, members committee, uh, I remember almost verbally firing one of the, one of the components. In fact, I wanted to to uh, to demonstrate the existence of linkages between the adoption of different money management techniques and uh, trading and investing objectives. Uh, this is a gap um, in the finance uh, academic academic research. And when we speak about trading objective, when I talk about trading objective, uh, that is something that can be um, formally specified as well. For instance. You can think about making 40% uh, in one year uh, with a probability of 60% or better. So just to uh, to make a long story short, I, I researched the topic thoroughly, of course. And um, and while the linkages between money and risk management and on one side and trading results on another side are very well understood and also very well documented in finance research, nothing had been, had been written in 2010 in relation to the linkages between money management and investing and trading objectives. So that was my contribution, something that did not exist in um, in finance research. And of course, uh, finance research is also very focused on asset allocation rather than position sizing. But uh, we as retail traders, we are interested in money management and position sizing. Um, uh, so... I convinced the committee and uh, eventually, you know, I... I I um, set up the uh, research model based on a univariate Monte Carlo simulator, and uh, eventually I got the highest grade of my year. Um, finally, uh, the last point, the reason why I'm qualified about this topic, I use it every day in my trading, and I've studied with Van Tarp, one of my mentors, and Van Tarp, I believe, does not need presentations. He's a reckoned um, um, world expert about position sizing and training psychology. So let's dive into into this, and let me tell you what I've learned uh, in the last in the last few years. So before I get there, I want to share with you some key rules of trading. This, these rules um, actually drive my trading from uh, A to Z. And the number one is PPC, protect precious capital. That's uh, what I already introduced before. When the money is gone, the game is over. That's very, very important to me. And even a small amount of uh, money can become Im important sums if you respect your money and, and you're not a fool with it. When I speak about capital also, uh, there is on one side the financial capital, but on the other side there is also the emotional capital, and I'm, touch a little, I'm going to touch a little bit about that later on. You, um, you have to learn to trade, of course, only low-risk ideas, and uh, to me these risk ideas are somehow hidden uh, in price retracement. This is why I love and use Fibonacci. But I use Fibonacci in, in a non-traditional way. You, of course, you have heard of this before, plan your trade and trade your plan. Uh, a lot of people know it, but uh, don't do this. Uh, you have to become maniacal about having a plan and probably already have. Um, there are so many things that can happen in the market that if you don't have a plan, uh, you will not have success. Uh, Sorry to be blunt, but uh, it is what it is. Finally, you have to understand the psychology of the market. And um, if you don't understand the psychology of the market, it's best to learn, better to learn a method that incorporates the psychology of the markets. And and for this, you can have a look at my Fixstalker method and Fixstalker timing technique. So just go to my, my blog. There's a lot of information there. And... Uh, uh, you can also download the key concept to correct your behavior in a free book in which I've written extensively about um, psychology, the psychology of the market. Um, now, if you are into trading for some time, you know that trading is not about picking the next trade successfully. Trading is about building a process that you can repeat over and over again. And that's the only way 
Uh, and we as traders have, uh, are paid uh, for the quality of our decisions. We are decision makers and we have to have in place a process that allows us to, uh, to get the right decisions consistently. So this is a very brief introduction. Now, uh, there are some fundamental principles and truths of the market that are specifically related to risk um, management. And you have to know this. Um, this is very, very important. What you see here uh, are um, principles uh, that apply to risk management. There are more principles, of course, principles and truths, um, and that you, you must know if you want to be successful in this business. But um, let me mention related here to, uh, to risk management. Anything can happen in the market. Every moment is unique. Our edge, our trading edge, our system, the, the trades that are generated by our system uh, are not more than a distribution uh, between random distribution between wins, wins and losses. And we have to we have to know that. Now, uh, as I said, uh, so principle, uh, some pretty important principles that we have to predefine risk uh, of every trade. We have to completely accept that. So a lot of people um, do not accept the risk they are taking. They are taking 10% uh, risk in one trade, but they really do not accept that risk, which means that they do not entertain in their mind the idea that uh, the stop loss could be hit. And according to current uh, statistics, 22% of traders, and this is data from a large um, North American broker, 22% of traders don't choose stop loss. And as a result, they get uh, often marking calls. So they lose the world capital. Um, so um, it is important that, uh, as I said, there are other mar market fundamental uh, principles and truths that are not related to risk management, that are related to uh, the trading method, and um, I will make some assumptions here that you have a method that works, that you understand, and you are able to objectively identify the edge of your system, meaning that you can measure how good your system can do. And you act on your system, on the signals that are provided by your system, without reservation and without hesitation. That's very, very important. Why do we need uh, risk management? We need risk management to reach objectives. And there are six objectives here that I want to mention. Protect our capital. Specify always the position size and the risk of our trade. We want to, um, we want to actually try to obtain a risk-free trade. What is a risk-free trade? A risk-free trade is a, a trade with no residual risk involved. So we are not risking our own money. And there are only two ways to get such a trade. The first one is to move a stop above or below the entry. Uh, depending whether we have a long or a short. And, uh, and the other would be to take partial profits off of the market so that the residual risk is zero. There are no other ways to get risk-free trades. And you have to get risk-free trades can consistently in your trading all the time if you want to be successful. Um, so we also want to last enough in this game to enter the nearly 5%. There are other objectives that risk management allows us to reach if we couple it with money management. And this is to increase the dollar risk as our financial capital goes higher, and I would add as our, our uh, emotional capital goes higher, and reach objectives by becoming aggressive with the use of market, markets money. And this would be uh, a little bit um, uh, clearer later on when, when I'm going to speak about how we can magnify, how we can we can supercharge our profits using uh, risk management. Now, um, some people think that their risk, they, their risk is really the trade margin. And this is something that is defined by their broker. It's not defined by themselves. It's not defined by the risk that there is in the market. As I mentioned before, 25% of people do not um, uh, practice uh, proper uh, risk management. Actually, they don't even know maybe, and they don't use stop losses. On the other hand, I use 1% of risk uh, and less, and this is not my trademark. And this is actually uh, the amount of money that I can lose, I lose from my account, on my account, if my stop loss is hit. And this is to take into consideration any leverage that I have available and the brokers make avail makes available to me. Um, so, 
let me um, so um, let me now introduce the CPF for traders formula. This is a very simple formula for forex that allows you to to calculate the position size and um, your risk. It's very very simple, simple stuff, but. Uh, not, I think that I suspect that less than 50%, so there are more than 50% of people don't choose these formulas. And there are people who are two years, three years into trading, and they never use it. So that's the reason, the only reason I decided to put it here, very basic um, risk management. So if I risk 1%, my dollar risk is defined as the current account size uh, times 1%. So if my current account size is 10,000, then I risk one hundred dollars. That's my dollar risk. Uh, the risk for unit is uh, the absolute value of actually it's the number of pips that I risk. So it's the entry price minus the stop loss price, uh, and I take the absolute value of it. So in this case, if I have thirty pips of risk, I calculate it um, using my entry and stop loss price. My entry price in this case is one thirty eight ten. This is the euro dollar um, uh, ideally, and my stop loss price is one thirty seven. How many how many units I can, can I trade? When I speak about units, I speak about uh, lots. So let's look at let's suppose I use standard lots, ten dollars per pip. In this case, my risk, if I have thirty uh, risk, uh, pips of risk, would be three hundred dollars, and this is bigger than uh, one hundred, which is my allowed risk, one percent on my uh, account size. So in this case, I cannot trade. I cannot even trade one standard lot. So I go down and I look at mini lots and then I multiply 30 pips for $1 and I have $30 here. And I know here that I can trade three mini lots. Of course, I can trade 3.3 mini lots if I consider micro lots. So the lot size I have to use it, it's mini, the multiplier is one and it's 10 for standard lots and 0.1 for micro lots. The position sizing is given by the number of units multiplied by the current uh, pair price uh, multiplied by the lot size. So very basic stuff. I wanted to give this because a lot of people don't do this uh, at all. So what we have covered so far, so far the only thing that we have covered is that we have to define the risk of every trade and we completely accepted the risk. Actually, we hope we completely accepted the risk. But if you risk 1% of your account, it's easy to accept the risk. And if we don't accept the risk, we have to let the trade go. This is very important, very, very important, okay? So uh, at the moment, uh, with, uh, with basic risk management, as you can see, we only cover some of the truths and principles that are important for proper risk management to make us a successful as traders. So um, in terms of objectives, of course, we cover one and two. We, are now, we now have something in place that allows us to protect our precious capital, and we also specified the position size of the trade. We still don't know and didn't do anything about obtaining risk-free trades and lasting enough to win this game and, of course, increase the dollar risk um, as um, uh, the financial and emotional capital goes higher and also supercharge our profit. So let's see uh, how we can do that. And... Now that we have our basic risk management fixed and in place, we know also that we can um, uh, last, uh, last uh, long enough here, and this is very important. So, but is that enough? No, it is not, as you understand now. It's not, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, we have to answer a number of very, very important questions. You have to do this. So, uh, and this helps us by answering these questions, uh, we can actually fill the gap uh, of the missing truths and principles. So what are these questions? First of all, am I trying in the right direction? Path of least resistance. What is happening to price? Do you understand price structure? Do you understand what program, what program trading and algorithms are doing on the higher and lower time frames? Do you understand how uh, professional traders are positioned in this market? How can I obtain a risk-free trade? Again, price structure, and understand what's going on. Um, uh, what's going on? Um, um, and uh, price structure is very important. So, Rob, yes, uh, trading, it's a trading Bible. Trading in the zone is very, very important. What I did in my years of trading, I took even each and every one of those principles 
uh, and truths, and I kind of embedded into my trading. So when I trade now, uh, following my rules, I know that I respect all those principles and truths, and that's a beauty. So I absolutely agree with you, Rob. So continuing with the questions, um, I'm, um, uh, I'm, am I entering to trade, the trade too late? Should I take pro pro partial profits off the table? And where, if I have to take profit um, profits off, off the um, table? Can I enter the setup in steps? Uh, and can I use this to further limit, limiting risk? And how can I supercharge my profits? I'll show you that you don't have to raise 10% in a trade to supercharge your profits. But uh, uh, you use intelligently money markets uh, or your gains from the market. So no need to do that. So let's start. I'm going to give you also some example on charts now. Um, what, um, what a lot of people uh, uh, think um, that in that... Um, you know what they do they, they look only at small time frames they look at the sequence of three to four bars uh and actually they never understand the big picture uh, and this is very very troublesome um i wouldn't be able to trade like that anymore of course when you do that uh, you you find yourself in trouble and you find yourself trading against the main point which is the path of least resistance so um uh, so even if you have everything in place, the CPR risk formula in place, you are, you are managing risk in the proper in the proper uh, way. Because if you are you are trading against the, the path of least resistance, then now you um, you come with a loss. And I have an example here from a, a person I I know. Uh, two weeks ago, I gave him my uh, weekly um, video review. I gave this uh, this picture about this SP uh, in minute uh, five hundred. Um, I, I, uh, if you subscribe my newsletter, you'll get these video reviews, uh, weekly video reviews for free in your uh, email. Now, in this uh, example, we had this 1933 um, area, uh, level area of resistance, a level where resistance started, and press never got about this 1938. 1939 here. So what happens is that I, I mentioned this uh, setup could bring press into first target, 1899. But I had one person who actually got involved, like to got involved to get involved right here. Uh, while the market was reacting, uh, but within a larger short move. And this is the area. So probably what, what happened is that he saw this move higher and then decided to get involved. And he, he ended up getting involved right here. So um, that's what I mean uh, for, uh, you know, trading uh, in the direction of the uh, the market. The market here was going down in this four hour chart. Now the 15 minute chart, you cannot get uh, long. So this is, this is just a quick example here. Uh, next, uh, so do we understand what's, what's happening to price? That's very, very important. And um, um, I believe that the majority of traders really do not have any idea about what about what the market is doing. Um, they 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 do not understand what's happening to price and what are the forces price is subdued at every single moment. And uh, and with forces here, I specifically mean you know what I use in my head. So for me, these forces are algos, program trading, and professional traders. And I need to know, I need to, I want to know what they're doing at different time frames, of course, right? Because this could put upward or downward, downwards pressure to price. So there are some events uh, that are considered relevant uh, by, by, by the majority of traders, but they're really not. And, and you might ask, okay, which kind of, uh, which kind of events? For instance, I see a lot of people considering trend lines uh, or uh, trend lines breakouts as a really relevant event. It is not for me. It is not a significant event. And um, and what is important to me is that uh, you know it's only if algos change the direction the direction of their trading. I want to I want to get involved because if they don't do it and I trade in the opposite direction, if I trade against them. I know I'm doomed. So uh, let me show you an example here. This is the euro dollar back in 2012 that you find this all the time. This is something I have in my in my um, library. So what is a 
uh, significant breakout in that. Let me show. Let me. Let me. Let me show you here. Um, ah, now, unfortunately, um, I cannot annotate properly. Okay, now, if you look at this market and you look at this trend line uh, down here, you would you would probably try to get involved when you have a breakout on the trend line. But if we, if I look at this market with the Google, uh, the Google's uh, uh, program trading, uh, what I have is a uh, is a first area of resistance here, which shows me a target here, and the market gets there, and then uh, uh, after the market breaks above this level, I still have you know an area of resistance, uh, an area of resistance that program trading is is showing to me, and so I don't want to get involved here. And as you can see, once price gets into this resistance, you are stopped out. Because if you put a stop below uh, the previous lows, you are stopped out. So I hope you understand that there are some events that that the majority of people, uh, the technical trading uh, crowd, uh, defines uh, the significant, but they are really not because they don't they don't understand uh, price structure and what's happening on the market. I hope this clarifies a little bit. So. Um, next is how can I obtain a risk-free trade? Um, I, I told you already what a risk-free trade is. So now, if one of the principles, um, sorry, the fruits, so the principles is that anything can happen in the market. The market can do anything, as Mark Douglas puts in his book. Uh, uh, of course, you know how, how we should ask: How do we protect ourselves? Uh, one mechanism is to use free risk trades. And I use them all the time. And you see you see it on, also on my market analysis. So this is not only a good idea, actually. It's uh, it's actually a great idea. And actually, it's the only way the, that you can uh, employ in order to move into the elite of fact of something. Actually, if you do not employ risk-free trades, believe me, you're not going to make it. And I have to be very, very clear here. So. Um, um, so MRC, uh, I saw a question. What was the feed uh, drawn there? That's uh, that comes from uh, the way I look at the market. It's a sequence of measured moves. If you subscribe my newsletter or just go to my website, that I have more than six hundred videos, and you can review how I do this analysis uh, on the way online. Okay. Uh, so um, moving to continuing here then on risk free trades. Uh, in order to obtain a risk-free trade, we have to we must check what's happening on the higher time frames, uh, and only after that we can decide yes, I can obtain a risk-free trade in this specific market configuration or not. I cannot, and that's very very important. So we have to be cognizant about what's happening on the larger time frame. So let me give you a recent example on the US versus Japanese yen, and here, um, what I uh, what we see here is that. But I just want to check one thing. Um, I didn't let me know about the time. Um, and if you can, please, thanks a lot. Appreciate that. Um, so, um, uh, in this example, this is an example on US dollar versus Japanese. And by the way, I also wrote recently on fsweet.com an analysis on the Japanese economy uh, and the currency analysis of everything. You can go there and search for Japanese uh, economy. And you'll find that the fundamental analysis is actually uh, supporting uh, my technical analysis. Very, 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 very nice. It's a beauty. Now, um, going back to this, this is a weekly chart of the US dollars and Japanese yen. And the 103.10, it's a, a, a level that identifies an area of resistance on the weekly time frame. It's traced from highs beginning of 2014 to lows at the end of January 2014. Now, if you notice, if you know that there is this uh, area of resistance and a potential level, uh, and you go back to the daily time, which is what you see now on the, um, on the screen, uh, you will, um, you will uh, want to uh, get involved uh, uh, on a breakout. So let's suppose that you're a breakout trader. And let's suppose that on a large enough time frame, you uh, you use this level of a breakout. Now, if you lose this level as a breakout, um, and you use the previous lows 101 here as your stop, what happens is that 
uh, you do not have enough space here to get the risk free trade and you don't have it because the distance between your entry point and your stop loss it's larger than the, the distance to to um, your entry point and the resistance level yeah. hope this is clear it's very simple stuff but a lot of people do not understand price structure and so they make a mistake and as you can see here what happens is that the market actually went there um, re respected that level of resistance and then came back down well past the um the level of entry now as the market can do anything we don't know if this market is going to go up again now it did but we never know that we cannot assume that okay so that's very very important mrc uh, what is the fundamental and tech analysis uh, of uh, of the Japanese uh, economy? Go to fsweet.com, the search uh, box, and input the Japanese economy, and you will read that. Um, I'll see very good, um, uh, very good um, uh, feedback about that analysis. Let me know what you think. Drop me an email at tripstalker at gmail.com. So, um, thank you. Um, so let's um, let's look at the next point then. And where should we take uh, uh, partial profits up? This is another very important risk management. People, they just use the CPA formula. They think they're doing risk management. They're not. Uh, you do risk management if you uh, really understand what's price structure, what's, 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 what's the price is doing, what participants are doing. So, so um as I mentioned to you before, there are only two ways you can get uh, you can you can get a risk-free trade. One is to move uh, your your uh, stop uh, above price for longs, below price for shorts, and the other one is to remove a portion of your position. Now, think of it. Um, 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 uh, you know, when we move stops, we are not really. Uh, taking into account one of the fundamental principles that the market can do anything. And why is that? If the if market price can do anything, it can also surely also retrace into a trailing stop loss. And we have to we have to accept that. And unfortunately it often it often does. And of course uh, to take partial profits out um, uh you know uh, we do when we do that we do that in a way that we can actually manage risk and also account for the fact that uh, markets uh, as i said can do anything and we need to plan them so we need to answer two questions the two questions we we want to answer are two simple questions uh the first question is at what price level price, price um, profits should be taken and the second question is how much of my position should I take out? And uh, now let me show this again on that uh, recent USD JPY um, example. And, and uh, just let me check time. I think we are doing very well here. Um, it's uh, 30 minutes. And uh, let me go back to, uh, to this presentation. Sorry for that. Um, so, as I said, there are these two questions, and let me show you an example. Now, it's the same example we saw before, but I'm using an entry point which is a little bit smarter and uses um, and uses um, um, uh, my my uh, my edge the way I look at the market. So, uh, let me let me read uh, Rob's question here. FIB drawn from lows to highs and in extended markets highs to highs and vice versa. I hope I got it right. Yes, that's the way. That's the way I I, I do it. Use uh, some other uh, um, I use some other uh, uh, rules as well. But that's uh, that's one way you look at uh, you look at it. Um, so let's continue on this then. Uh, let's suppose in this example that you enter, uh, let me see if I can actually annotate this chart properly. Um, okay, apparently apparently it's, uh, it's not that easy, so let me see. Um, let me try again. Uh, oh no, okay. So let me comment on it then. 
seed is 61.8 percent here out uh, 101.83 suppose that the entry uh, is just above that level with a stop below lows here 101.06 let me see if i can so 101.06 is here and unfortunately it's not easy to unravel it but uh, that's my risk um entry minus stop and uh, where should I take partial profits? I think partial profits here at 102.55. The reason for that is that's the distance between the entry uh, and the stop. So the same distance is my one uh, unit of risk of gain. So when I have one unit of risk of gain, I actually, um, I actually um, take half of the position off. If I don't do this, then see what happens here. What happens is that if I don't get half of uh, my my position here, fifty percent of it uh, here. What happens is that the market can do anything. So the market can also retrace against me. And if it retraces below the entry point here, this is the entry point. Um, it uh, it actually you know it, if if I move my stop at entry, uh, I'm stopped out. And believe me, this is the bigger mistake of all. This is probably the most common mistake people do in trading in relation to risk management. They did it an enormous number of times. I don't do this anymore. Um, and see, if you if you move your stop to this level here, the 101.81, what happens is that the market can retrace on you. So you are still in a position that eventually goes in the direction of your initial trade, and now you're stopped out. So if you take 50% of it, you manage risk because now you are only stopped out when the market goes below the entry point. And when it does, it's a break, break even. Beauty, beauty. That's when you're doing risk management, not when you're just risking 1%. Okay, that's very important. And um, uh, so uh, if if the market just reaches to above the stop level, then the market can continue higher. And that's what happens. And you're still in it with 50% of the position. Where and that and that's where the money is. So I hope you get this very very important um, point. Um, uh, you know this is probably the single problem that produces the eighty percent of the losses in the market by starting traders and experienced traders as well. So uh, can I enter a trading step and should I enter a trading step? Oh yes, you should, and it's a very very good idea and. Uh, when, especially when you know price structure, the price structure that is, is forced by the participation of algorithms in modern markets. When you when you know that, uh, or when you have an edge, a trading gap which is significant, so you know the numbers, you know the reliability, the expectancy, the number of opportunities, then you can do that. And if you need a good edge, check uh, again my work online and uh, the courses and mentor I'm going to offer in the future. Um, the Good news here is that uh, when you attempt to enter multiple legs uh, of a trade, so you enter a trade in multiple legs, multiple chunks. For example, you enter 50% of your position on a larger time frame, based on a larger time frame, and then you enter um, you enter a smaller, uh, you know, you enter another 50% on a smaller time frame. When you do that, you have two advantages. The first one is that you further lower risk. And I'm going to show you an example here. The other one is that you have an opportunity to uh, boost your gains, uh, especially when you work on the smaller time frame. So beauty, I mean, you do risk management on, the, on one side, and on the other side, you do you do proper money management, and you can actually uh, boost your gains as well. So the price that you have to pay, of course, is that we need to be our trading station you have to time the entries on the on the legs on the smaller time frame, but uh, you know it's a give and a take because then 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 uh, can greatly multiply our gains, and we close our, we uh, manage our risk more closely. So let me give you an example here. Now I'm not going to um, explain in detail uh, the levels here. Um, I'm only going to say that, uh, and the reason for that, I mean, these schematics, you can give a look at it, but it's more related to uh, the trading method rather than the risk management. At this point, I want to um, focus on risk management. And um, I would only say that E1 is the entry level on the larger time frame. And for the second entry, we can use E2 level, or we can use uh, on a smaller time frame, or we can use 
the all the way halfway back um, area uh, C. So um, mm, let me show you a real example here. Um, so uh, I need to, I need to, sorry, I need to do one small thing here. I have to change the animation on this tray, on this, um, uh, otherwise I have to invert it, otherwise you won't be able to understand. So let me let me go back and um, my apologies for this. Let me let me correct this one. This is very important. So um, slideshow. So from current slides. <laughs> my apologies. Give me just one second. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix this because uh, I want to show you the chart first. And then I want to show you uh, the uh, calculation. So here we go. Uh, apologies for this. So, okay. So let's look at this uh, at this chart. Again, you will recognize it. The US dollar chart on the ground. By the way, I took some of those points. So we have the ABC here, and we have two levels. E1 is the level that confirms longs on a on a uh, four hour time frame. This is the 101.52. Um, the C uh, level where we uh, the C area is this uh, starting the area starting from 101.34 and with a stop below 101.27. So I get involved half of my position here and half of my position at the C area. So I get involved uh, uh, to be able to annotate this chart and sometimes I get problem, but let me let me let me show you here. I have to work out a little bit here. <laughs> So the first half I enter here and the second half I enter here. See what happens here. Uh, uh, of course, this is not handpicked. So you will have this situation all the time. Now, let's suppose that I exit the 10274. The reason why I exit there is because there's the level where there's a violation of the sequence of measure move higher, of this of this measure, of this uh, move higher here. So uh, when I when we look at the um, at the um, at, at the calculations here, that's what happened. The first half of the position I entered at 101.53 with a stop below uh, 101.05, so 101.04. This is a risk of 49 pips and only risk 50% uh, of my uh, unit of risk here. So uh, at 102. 02, which is 49 pips above one of the entry point here, 101.53, I exit with 49 pips. Now, this gives me a 0.25, a 25% of my unit of risk as a pair. I exit the second part of this first leg with 121 pips when markets gets to 102.74, which is that level that I showed you before. The second leg, the one that I enter on the smaller time frame here, is... Um, an entry at 101.35 and a stop below this red line here. Uh, let me show you this again if I can. Uh, the stop is below this red line here. So that's the 101.28. So in this case, I get eight pips of risk rate. I mean, if we can get this kind of risk, I mean, I I, I get this kind of risk when I when I trade on the 15 minutes time frame. Sometimes I, I trade, I time the trade on the one minute time frame. So eight pips of risk, uh, you can get 25% of all your, of our uh, risk when we um, uh, when we hit uh, the first target. This is eight pips above 101.35. And now when price gets to 102.74, I have 139 pips of gain, which is four times 34 um, the, um, the unit of risk. So as you can see here. With this small trade, I can get 5.45%. There's also another very important advantage, and the advantage is that now I um, I removed my risk, um, I reduced my risk as well, because trading when I trade two legs, what happens is that um, when price reached 101.43, which is the partial profit of the second leg, then also my overall risk is reduced to 50%. Because now you understand that, that now you understand that if you if you enter uh, if you enter the market at C and you get to the first uh, and you take profit alpha bit out, if the market goes back to C, 
you will exit this leg uh, without the risk. So if market goes lower, now we have only 50% of your original risk. I hope you get this point. It's a very, very important point. So as you can see, trading uh, in steps, and this is probably something that you knew already, uh, uh, not only uh, man, uh, uh, helps uh, managing your, uh, your position and, uh, and boosting your, um, your gains, but also helps you manage your um, risks, uh, your risk in a better way. So let's look now at the last part of my presentation, how you do supercharged profits. Lots of people, they, they risk 10%, 5%, 20% of their capital wrong. You don't have to risk that much in order to make money in the market. Keep that in mind. And people believe that, you know, they have a small account and the only way they can get uh, ahead is by risking a lot. Wrong. Let me show you why. Basically, um, the main idea is that we want to charge profit, supercharge profit without compromising our own capital. And, uh, and of course, applying uh, best risk management practices and uh, one of that is up to apply the CPR formula I gave you before. So we only risk 1% of our own capital, but who says that we cannot risk more than 1% on, uh, on other people's money? We cannot, you know, we can risk more than 1% oh, that, that on, on the gains we get from the market. So, so the idea would be, why don't we risk 10% on, uh, on, uh, on gains? And that's the main idea of, uh, money layers and what I call ma market markets money. Actually, what Vantage calls markets money. These are the gains we that we extract from the market. So we use these gains in a different way. Let's make an example here and be very very clear to you. Let's suppose that our capital is ten thousand. So we risk one percent, which means a dollar risk of one hundred percent. So assume that at some point we have 10,000 10, uh, in gains. So our capital now is 11,000. Um, 11, uh, 11, so if we risk 10% on our gains only on the, on the 1,000, this is an additional 100% uh, of, uh, of risk, of dollar risk. So uh, we risk 1% on our money and 10% on other people's money. So in the example I gave you before uh, on the US versus Japanese, yeah, the trade is now that trade now gives us a return of 10.9%. Great, great. You only need a few of these to, to do a very good year. So uh, now if you assume we have 30,000 in gains, you know, we can, uh, and with a capital of 1,300,000, 13, uh, sorry, 13,000. Now, this 10% of the 3,000 give us an additional $300 of this. So we quadrupled our risk going from, 10,000 to 13,000. 13, so now the return of that uh, trade is huge. It's 21.8%. Can you see how, by not applying any crazy mechanism, Kelly Cray criterion or anything there, I mean, Martingale uh, um, uh, uh, techniques or things like that, we, we can get very good results. And actually, with only 30% in gains, we made over 20% in just one trade. So that's powerful. So um, we can also this, uh, use, do this using money market layers. And uh, you can have two layers. In the first layer, we risk 10%. In the second, we risk 20%. And now we have the risk that goes higher, 16, eight times, 16 times. And we can get the same trade now returning 87.2%. Of course, we are risking more. We are risking more, of course, but we are risking more not on our um, own initial capital. And that makes a huge difference in terms, of, um, in terms of emotional capital as well. Okay. Now, here with a 100% in gains, if we had $20,000 in our account now, we would make an 80% uh, trade here. Okay. And this is really what I wanted to uh, tell you uh, before I leave to your question. Let me let me recap the takeaways here. So um, uh, basically, first of all, you have to take risk seriously. This is a business, not a pastime. You can have a, it as a pastime, uh, and that's fine. Uh, paper trade, don't use the real money. Do you intend to succeed in this business? Uh, you have to take risk seriously. Use the CPR formula all the time for position sizing all the time. Uh, do uh, proper risk management and respect the truths and principles 
from uh, from my backless. Don't risk more than one percent. There is no need to do that. I just showed you that if we use money uh, layers and if we use markets money markets money, uh, we can actually get very good results, very good um, trade results. Um, uh, you know, risking just percent on our own capital. Try to obtain, and actually you should obtain risk-free trades as soon as possible, all the time. Here, the price structure, understanding price structure is good. Applying only the basic fundamental uh, risk money management best practice is not enough. You have to understand price structure. If you want to get an understanding of price structure, look at my job and my work on www.fibstalker.com. Subscribe to the newsletter and shoot me an email. I'll give more, give you more information. There's a lot of a lot of videos and articles I have in my blog. It's more than 700 posts, uh, more than 600 videos the last year and a half. So get a look at those. Um, if you, um, uh, you should further reduce your risk because anything can happen in the market. You now know that. So you have to take partial profits off the market. You actually have to do this uh, part of your uh, own trading. Um, you can improve your gains by entering trades in steps, as I showed you in the example, so you can review the presentation again. And we can supercharge our profits with the use of other people's money. This is beauty. This 10%, not on your own capital, this 10% on the gains that the market gives to you. And you'll see that you'll be able to magnify um, your, um, your gains two, three, four, eight, ten times as well if you use money market layer. So uh, this is everything I wanted to tell you. Uh, I want to tell you, if you, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email, tipstalker at gmail.com. If you want to subscribe to the free newsletter, go to my website, uh, or you can use this um, um, address here. Yeah. So I'm, I'm open to, uh, to answer any questions. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Uh, and I'll be, I'll be very happy to answer the question. First of all, I, I hope this... Uh, webinar was useful. Please give me a why if you consider this useful, uh, or tell me uh, you know what you would like to cover more. Or just you know, uh, let me have your questions. Thank you, Raymond. Do you have any questions in relation to? Um, thank you, Gordon. Uh, do you have any questions in relation to risk management? Uh, I think I gave you some advanced risk management here. And this is very important. The basic risk management is not enough to be successful in modern markets. So what weight do you put on fundamental analysis? To be very honest with you, I don't use fundamental analysis. I only, uh, I only use fundamental analysis to confirm my setups on the weekly and monthly timeframes. The reason is that I cannot, uh, a fundamental analysis for me is not actionable. Uh, it's very discretionary, as you saw, I'm a very um, rule-based trader. So um, uh, fundamental is something I do because I have a background in, uh, in uh, finance. Uh, I like doing uh, analysis. I like uh, understanding what's going on, but I don't choose in my trading. Hope this answers the question, Rob. Any other questions? Thank you, Gianluca and Enrico. Yes, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, there is also Gianluca who's from Italy, so um, you might not be the only, the only Italian. You're very welcome, Rob. Uh, any other questions? Or I'm going to wrap, uh, wrap it up. Uh, okay, so um, up. thanks a lot for being here. Uh, and if you have any other questions, just shoot me an email, tipstalker at gmail.com. Uh, my website is bitstalker.com. I'm going to give you uh, to you here. And you can subscribe my newsletter as well if you wish. There's quite a lot of good information. Uh, thank you, Mare. Thank you, Enrico. Uh, uh, <laughs> MRC, my grand, grand, grandmother is from Italy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's beautiful. Um, so uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, thanks for spending your time. And uh, again, let me have your questions offline as well. Uh, the, uh, the webinar will be recorded and will be found in the archives. Thanks a lot and have a great day or a great afternoon or a great evening. Bye-bye now and till the next webinar. Bye-bye now. Ciao.